thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for inviting me to be part of the session. Uh, Dr. Schultz has already provided a summary of the session, so I believe this is an epilogue or a recap. So, uh, we have already seen how to uh, uh, make a paper and how to submit it, but ha what happens the day after? The day after means that the paper gets rejected. So, uh, just a minute. Presentation. So, rejections are the reason most of the potential authors don't even try to publish. And if you dissect the rejections, the causes may be within the manuscript or they can be outside the manuscript. Within the manuscript, the most problems are with the novelty, that is originality or with execution. And there, as we saw in the previous session, there might be ethical issues which invite rejection. But there can be causes outside the manuscript too. In the top journals, the competition is too stiff and you know, you are as good as the next paper which is getting accepted or rejected. Or our paper may not be relevant to the target audience or sometimes we do not put ourselves in the shoes of the reviewer. So what are the causes within the manuscript? You know, most of us start with the writing careers with a case report. You know, something looks very exciting to us and we want to share with our colleagues. But they are easy to write and also easy to reject. In fact, a lot of journals have actually stopped the submission of case reports in an effort to improve the impact factor. And so now we are crowded for space a lot. You have a better chance if you write a case series, more likely if it is prospective and controlled, and the best chance is obviously if it's a randomized controlled trial. For example, the, uh, if we write about a huge macular hole due to trauma, we cannot conclude anything except that traumatic macular hole can be really big. There is really no message to the reader here. It's a classic so what report ready for rejection. So, and now uh, to re quote Einstein, you know, if you say why the papers get rejected, you simply say because you do not follow what has been advised so far. So, I'll just uh, walk you through some of the serial points, just to recap the serial points. So, they can be problem with the abstract. Now, it's the standalone summary and the most important part of the abstract. And believe me, a lot of uh, papers do not make it beyond the abstract in, the, in terms of the uh, section editor or the reviewer. So uh, if you have a good abstract, it does not guarantee its acceptance, but if you have a bad abstract, it definitely guarantees rejection. So what can be the problems? The aims, methods, results and conclusions are not linked. The conclusions typically should follow from uh, results and prove or disprove the hypothesis. <coughs> So, there can be launching problems, you know, uh, the research question itself is not stated well enough. It should be clearly visible in the last paragraph of the introduction or the rationale of the result is either not valid or not validated. So, why we bother to do the study, what's new about it and why it is important for the readers to know about this new thing. Now, methodology is the thing which dictates the actual destination of a paper. The top rank journals have the most rigorous requirement from the methodology as you can see from the worksheet of ophthalmology journal. So it's so detailed that it's impossible to write a substandard paper, you know, you need not submit for that. So, um, uh, so it's obvious that if you prepare a junk food or fast food, you will be employed in a roadside restaurant McDonald's, but if you really put effort and make a really esoteric dish, then you might be a chef at JP residency. So, um, uh, uh, sometimes our intervention or uh, measurements are not suitable to the uh, aim that we are targeting. And frequently there are statistical issues. Now actually a lot of journals advise the author, especially of the larger studies, to consult a professional statistician. And finally there can be ethical issues like not taking um, uh, approval of the institutional review board or not compliant with health security declaration or reducing the identity of the patient or not taking informed consent. Uh, for example, taking informed consent is a, a very important thing for British and ophthalmology specifically. They want uh, actually a, a, a PDF of the patient's consent, uh, <coughs> and consent uh, with the uh, submission. Results are the heart of the matter. And we have to understand that more is not necessarily the matter. It's like having uh, too many olives in the martini. So our cellular findings may get cluttered by unrelated facts or sometimes and negative or unexpected findings or complications may not be stated and this does not escape the eyes of the reviewer. Sometimes the table data is repeated actually and tables are there to save space not to repeat the data. And obviously as uh, Dr. Shul just mentioned, 
It's not a place to comment on the data at all. Finally, discussion of the part is the most difficult for the beginners. As I always said, you are as good as the guy next to you uh, in a bodybuilding show. Similarly, so you have to compare and contrast yourself with the uh, existing literature and show what is new in this study as compared to the existing literature and how it is relevant for the reader. If it is not validated and uncomfortable studies are brushed in the carpet, it, it generally invites rejection. So unexpected outcomes, complications and limitations should be stated and they should be discussed. And we must state why the paper still retains relevance in spite of the limitations. And on the other hand, we sometimes go overboard with the generalizations, speculation or conclusions which again is a cause for rejection. Now what are the causes external to the manuscript? One is choosing the wrong journal. Now there are more than 100 ophthalmic journals to choose from uh, among the index and peer reviewed category. We generally prepare for the best, for the highest impact for journal, but you have to be prepared for the worst. And uh, sometimes our subject is too local for an international leader, a leadership, and uh, so we would probably better off in submitting to the local journal. Sometimes our subject is too specific, and uh, so it should be submitted to a specialty journal uh, rather than to the, um, uh, for the uh, general ophthalmology journal. And sometimes we simply have to look at the nature of articles which are most frequently published in the journal. For example, British Journal of Ophthalmology really loves community ophthalmology articles. So if you have a community ophthalmology, uh, ophthalmology articles, you have a good chance there. Finally, we should put ourselves in the shoes of the reviewer as well. Reviewers generally see whether this paper is written by a first-timer or an experienced or veteran. So they look at the diction, the style, the structure, the compliance of the references with the journal style, and also whether the styling betrays the previous rejection. Uh, one obviously tries to see whether it says something new or important, and if it does, then does the methodology uh, fit the purpose? Are the re results clear and crisp and uh, significant? Are the conclusions supported for the results? And are the limitations acceptable? Finally, a reviewer always see does it add to the patient care. This is what we sometimes uh, fail to address. In spite of all this precaution, we might get rejections. We all do get rejections. So publishing is as much about perseverance as about excellence because most high-end journals have an acceptance rate of about 25% or less. So one thing that we must do is uh, the attitude to rejection should be different. We should take it that we have given it to a, a top rated authority for a review and we have got their comments. We can address those comments and the concerns and submit to probably a lower end or lower impact factor or special degree, yeah. as the case may be. We should remove the telltale sign that has been uh, written for another journal. There is a controversy on whether we should disclose the rejection or not. Journals always encourage to disclose the rejection. Yes. But some of my senior colleagues, when I did the same for an article, it does not always invite a uh, second rejection, but uh, most people don't do that. Whatever you do, you should not put a manuscript in a dustbin easily. Remember that Hans Krebs Nobel Prize winning paper on Krebs cycle was rejected by nature before it got published in a small journal called Dutch Enzymologica. In fact, Krebs got a letter of apology from Nature Journal after he received the Nobel Prize. Similarly, the first report of fluorescein angiography in a human eye by Novartis and Alves was rejected by AGO, American Journal of Ophthalmology, and after several rejections got published in circulation. They also got a letter of apology from AGO. You do not always get that letter of apology, but as uh, when we look at the achievers or the successful authors or you know, um, the stars in any field, we look at their skill and their, uh, you know, their ability to score. But basically, we do not look at the fact that this success is built on several layers of failure. And as Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball player ever, said he can accept failure, but he cannot accept not trying. So to sum up, several times rejected papers are hastily written or not addressed to the journal to which they are targeted. And the lack of vigor is betrayed by the la uh, lack of originality in the idea. This is not just for the literature. A slack methodology or vague outcomes or inconvenient details being brought into the carpet. Remember, like fathering a child, a paper is conceived in excitement but groomed with patience. And even though the reviews may look ferocious to us, the papers are reviewed to be accepted. Thank you very much.